Hello, and uh, welcome back to The Shane Show. Uh, this is the uh, second PC build in my PC building series, uh, aka Venus. Um, it will be a Windows 95 um, PC. So uh, we'll uh, check that out. We'll um, hopefully uh, finish building all these before I actually start testing any software. Uh, I've been meaning to get all these PCs built. I have a lot of components. Uh, from various eras and uh, a bunch of computer cases and I thought well instead of sitting on shelves doing nothing putting them in an actual uh, computer case and uh, you know having a Windows 95 machine around might be useful actually uh, it will be useful because uh, I uh, bought my uh, wife a uh, serger it's like a fancy sewing machine thing for Christmas, uh, and uh, we just barely got around to setting it up, but we found out that the uh, the discs that it came with said that uh, the minimum OS is Windows 95, so I think I'm going to use the minimum OS, uh, so it'll be nice to have this Windows 95 machine around. Anyways, uh, enough chitty chat, let's uh, get to building this thing, let's check out the components. All right, let's go ahead and talk uh, hardware. Um, see what we're going to be putting in this PC build today. I guess we'll start with the uh, motherboard. All right, so uh, what we have here is a pretty standard Intel motherboard. It's the Intel AL440LX. Um, it's a uh, slot one motherboard, so we can use our Pentium 2 processor. It's got uh, three memory module um, sockets. Uh, here's your power connector for your power supply, floppy drive connector. It's got two um, parallel ATA connectors for hard drives and CD-ROMs. Uh, AGP, I believe this is uh, 2X. We've got four PCI slots and uh, two ISA slots. Um, and I think that about does it for the top of the motherboard. Let's go ahead and look at the I.O. We've got uh, two PS2 ports for mouse and keyboard, two USB. I think there is a way to get USB to work on Windows 95, but we'll have to investigate that later. Um, we've got two serial connectors, a parallel connector, and a uh, joystick connector. And here's your um, audio connections. Uh, they're unlabeled, so... I guess we'll have to figure out which one goes to the speaker, mic, and uh, line in or line out. Not sure. Um, as for the sound card, um, what we have on this motherboard is a, uh, a Yamaha chipset. Let's see if we can get that to show up. Hmm. Well, it's a Yamaha OPL3, I believe. Um, it doesn't have the uh, synthesizer chip which is apparently an option on this motherboard, but it does have the Yamaha sound. So we'll have to check that out, see if it sounds any good. But yep, yeah, there's uh, the uh, basic motherboard. Um, as I was talking about before, we're going to be using a Pentium 2. This is the uh, Pentium 2 266 megahertz. Uh, basic heat sink on there, it's slot one style, so hopefully uh, that doesn't give us any trouble, but um, yeah, so basic uh, processor. This is a pretty significant jump over the last processor we used, which was a uh, Pentium 1, uh, 200 megahertz. So we'll have to see if we can get some benchmarks in between this and that and see what, what the difference is. Um, but I believe it is pretty significant. Um, Let's uh, take a look at the uh, memory. We've got 128 megabytes of uh, PC100 SD RAM. Pretty standard, nothing really to say about that. Um, for the uh, video card, we've got this uh, S3 Verge um, with four megabytes of memory. It's a uh, VGA connector, um, PCI interface. So pretty standard issue, but 
uh, we'll see how that works. Uh, we'll play some games on it and see how it uh, stands up to the test of time. All right, what else do we got here? We got the hard drive. And we're going to be using a 13.6 uh, gigabyte. It actually says 12. I think that's the usable space. Not sure who wrote that, but yeah, so it's an IBM. Pretty standard issue. It's got this little connector, I've not, or little cover over some of these chips. I've not seen that before, but pretty handy, I guess. Make sure we don't get any static on there. You know, I've never had that happen before, but I guess there's always a first for everything. Um, we've also got a uh, Mitsumi floppy drive. Um, if you've seen my last video, you'll know that I do not have any um, floppy disks that work. So this is more of just for aesthetics. Um, maybe eventually I'll get some uh, floppy disks that actually um, function properly. And we'll test that out. Um, we've also got an optical drive. Uh, a little bit overkill because I'm having a hard time finding any just regular CD-ROMs with a beige front uh, front plate, but so this was like the cheapest op optical drive I could find. Um, and it's, I believe a DVD burner. Um, but yeah, LG, pretty simple. We just need it for reading, uh, optical discs. So I guess it'll do. And then for the power, we've got a Fox link, uh, 250 watt power supply. So that should provide enough uh, power for all of our needs. Uh, it's got your standard uh, motherboard connector and then a few uh, Molex connectors, far more than what we need, but it is what it is. This is before they had the modular type. So you just get whatever they throw on there. But uh, yeah, so that's the uh, hardware we're gonna be using for this uh, Windows 95 build. Let's get to building it. All right, let's uh, see if this bad boy works. If not, we'll have some stuff to troubleshoot. 
Let's give it a whirl. Well, it's making noises, that's good. Oh, I saw a video. And it is a Packard Bell, nice. Okay, it's counting the memory. That's definitely good. Detected the uh, Pentium 2 266, that's good also. Shows a uh, CD-ROM drive and the uh, hard drive. Hopefully there's nothing on that hard drive. Please don't load my porn collection. Okay, good. All right, so there you have it. Um, booted properly, I didn't see any issues. Um, we'll go ahead and install the OS next time and uh, go from there. So have a great day. Mm -hmm.